This happened to me about five years ago. I found a summer job at our local supermarket and about two weeks in I got asked to work the night shift. I accepted since I needed money and I never slept early anyway. Everything was fine until about 3am when a shirtless scarred up guy entered the store. After lingering around the store for a while, he quickly approached the counter making intense eye contact with me. As I was about to ask him if he needed any help, he whispered and told me not to move. I first didn't hear him so I asked him if he could repeat what he said. At that point he got agitated and yelled at me this time. In a swift motion he vaulted over the counter, going up to the alcohol section trying to grab a bottle of whiskey. Thankfully the owner hit a baseball bat under the counter. The moment he turned his back to me, I took the bat and swung full force at his knee. He winced in pain and tried to get up. I wound my bat again acting like I was going to hit him again just to see him pull out a homemade shiv. I let him get up, and the moment he got up, he swung his shiv at me, lightly lacerating my wrist. I pushed him back with my bat and he ran for the door and got out. The day after, I called the cops and showed him the security camera footage, but they haven't contacted me since. I think it's safe to say I won't be working the night shift again. A little over a year ago, I had a job working overnight at a gas station close to my house. I'm a woman and was 31 at the time. I know to some it seems unsafe for a woman to work the graveyard shift by herself. However, it was a slow store and the police station was about 20 feet across from it. I didn't think I would have that many problems. There would be about 30 customers in an 8 hour shift and that was on a busier night. Anyway, it was about 3.30 in the morning. I went outside to sweep the parking lot and last minute checked the trash. It was time for a cigarette and I had one headphone in. Across the road in the parking lot of the police station. I saw a man with his back to me. He was swaying back and forth while looking down. Honestly, it looked like he was just taking a piss so I didn't think much of it. Against the police station though? They closed at 4pm and didn't open again until 6 in the morning but why would you even risk taking a piss on the building? By the back of his ripped white t-shirt, I remembered that he had come in about 4 hours earlier. He was a total creep and I could already tell he had a good buzz going. I didn't say anything. I just took my eyes off of him and tried not to draw attention to myself. It was working until a car pulled in. I was still outside as they pulled up. I saw him look at the car and then at me, and back and forth again. As the customer was leaving, I walked her outside. I still had half a smoke and had left the dustpan outside with Squeegee. We both heard him start to swear angrily and seemingly engage in an argument with himself. She looked across the road and told me to be careful. I made an awkward joke about him being the one who should be more afraid of me. I looked over again, and the man was still there, but closer to the road, now facing the parking lot of my store. Whatever he was yelling was completely unintelligible. He was obviously very drunk and can barely stand straight. I didn't engage with him, but I didn't take my eyes off of him this time. I just slowly walked back into the store. Something about his face bothered me. It had a darkness to it, but his eyes looked wild. My experience during graveyard jobs has been that the crazy-eyed ones are worse than anyone else. I still had almost three hours to go, and two hours before any other employees got here. Instantly, I went to the computer and typed up a temporarily closed sign, just in case he wanted trouble. I was coming around the corner on my way to the doors when I saw that he'd walked across the road to my side now. I literally just barely got the second door locked when he stumbled into our very small parking lot. At this point, I told him to stop where he was and told him we were closed. I shook my head back and forth too, hoping to further discourage him. He started walking away but screamed something at me while he was walking. I don't mean he was grumpy and shouted at me or yelled that I was an asshole or anything. I mean like he was at an enraged volume and was violently throwing his hands everywhere. At this point, I decided to call the cops. It's a good thing too, because the minute I hung up with them, there he comes again up to the door. He starts pulling and banging on it. He backs up and runs into it, trying to ram it. I made the mistake of telling them that I had called the cops. I say I made the mistake of telling him, because once I said that, he took off. The police never found him. They drove around the road and the surrounding neighborhoods for over an hour, but found no one. He was on foot, so I didn't get where he could have gone to. He didn't harm me, and with them not finding him, I didn't fill out a police report. 
I was safe behind thick glass doors that were locked for the rest of my shift. Maybe if I didn't warn him ahead of time, I wouldn't have had to spend the last three months of my job constantly looking over my shoulder. I'll never know what the right choice was. I'm just glad I don't work there anymore. Back in 2007, I started a tech job with a long distance company. The company is no longer around and honestly, I don't know how they stayed in business as long as they did. It seemed like a pyramid scheme, but thankfully I was on the IT side of things so I didn't have to sell anything. After making my mark as the only female on my team, I decided to take the 10 hour night shifts. I was completely alone in the whole building. I would have to keep an eye on emails and make sure I answered calls. It was a very slow shift. I would get a lot of video games, reading, schoolwork, and writing in during this time. But sometimes, I would just wander the building and walk all around just to get away from my desk. One time, while I was walking around, I was going down to the lunchroom to grab a soda. The vending machine was on the basement floor. The basement had a wall of windows and one set of security doors. Same for the main entrance, only there was one camera facing the door. Nothing else to really make you feel safe. I didn't like going to the basement much. Because of the back of the building faced an acre of dark woods. There was a walking path to the woods, but for some reason, they didn't install lights for the walking path. Never sure why that was, but it didn't help the creepy factor. Sometimes I would see animals run past, but other times I felt like someone was watching me. I always tried my best to make it fast when getting a soda or a snack, but sometimes it didn't feel fast enough. So one night, I was making my way down to the basement of the building to get a soda. It was a slow, dragging night, and I needed a little caffeine for a pick-me-up. I counted my money as I walked to make sure I had enough to get in and out quickly. But out of the corner of my eye, I saw something dart from the glass door back into the darkness. I stopped dead in my tracks and tried to scan the forest, but like I said, it was just blackness. I felt a bit of unease, and everything told me to turn on my heels and go back to my desk. I tried shaking the feeling off, and briskly walked over to the soda machine and made my selection. The soda dropped, and as I bent down to get it, I heard a loud ping noise. It was as if someone had hit the glass with something. I stood straight up and felt the hair on the back of my neck stand up. I slowly turned around and was scared to see someone out there. But as I made the full turn, I saw once again nothing but darkness. I thought this was a good time to book it back up to the main floor. I didn't bother with the elevator. I went to the stairs and ran. My heart was already racing from having to go down there in the first place, then the loud bang and now running up two flights of stairs. Once I was back at my desk, I sunk in my chair and tried to calm down. It was just one noise. I was in a building with locked doors and locked inner offices. I kept saying over and over in my head. I was relieved after a little while after repeating that, but out of nowhere, I got that feeling of someone watching me again. I peeked up over my cubicle wall and looked around my office. Nothing seemed out of place until I turned to face the front of the building. Outside the first set of doors was a slender, tall, dirty male. He was cupping his hands around his eyes to try and see past the reflection of the lights inside. I dropped back down in my cubicle before he caught sight of me. He didn't look like anyone I have ever seen in the office and there was no good reason why he was checking out my office. As I sit in my chair, I hear the doors shake. I slowly stood up and watched him pull at the handles of the doors. They didn't budge, to my relief. But as I watched him, he turned to face me. His face looked bruised, or maybe even dirty, I couldn't tell which. Once his eyes locked onto mine, he started to bang harder and smack the glass. I was so scared it was the middle of the night, I was by myself and out in the middle of this office building complex. I grabbed my headset and I dialed 911. While getting the operator on the line, the guy was walking back and forth from one side to the other. He kind of seemed like he was planning on what to do next, and while speaking with dispatch, the guy disappeared from view. I tried to look in all directions, but I didn't see him. I knew that he wouldn't just walk off, not with how hard he was banging. Out of nowhere, a good-sized rock came and smashed against the door. I screamed and went under my desk. The operator asked what just happened, and I explained that a rock smashed against the glass door. She asked me if the glass was broken enough to let him in. 
I didn't want to stand up and look, but she told me to look to know where he was now. I crawled out from under my desk and just peeked over my wall and saw a huge crack down the first part of the door. I sank back down and told her to have the police hurry. She said they were on their way. Another smash against the door, but along with that, glass breaking sound. Sirens could be heard coming toward my building. I told the operator that the police had arrived and thank her for all their support. I stood back up and looked over the cubicle wall and the red blue lights were flashing wildly. But the thing I didn't see was the man. The top part of the door was completely smashed and the rock was lying on the inside of the entryway. When I gave my statement, I explained to the officer that the person could have been an ex-coworker who was fired a few weeks prior for stealing. He knew when people came and went, and he knew where we kept the cell phones we were selling. I went on to leave this job a month later and started at a credit card machine company. It was another call center, but I felt a lot safer there.